Hey guys, it's Aaron Gwinnett here from Defy Reality Entertainment. Back on the old computer. Designing Nia. As you can see here, I've got a screen of uh, a render of one of the recent backdrops that I've um, completed. Fairly recent. I've done a, um, I'm on the third one at the moment. And um, But yeah, it was beautiful how this one turned out. Really happy with it. And um, just been uh, going through some sort of uh, promo stuff today. So hopefully getting some new people on board, some new likes, uh, some new wish lists, some new followers, and um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing today, as well as modeling. So I'm actually modeling the third um, backdrop that I'm creating for the game for the uh, the uh, live action sequences for the game so there'll be actual actors in the game playing the characters looking at January for this to, um, to start filming and um, there's a bit of preparation that still needs to be done for this but um, doing the backdrops is one of that it's part of that preparation so it's actually quite exciting getting these done and um, really seeing what the lighting will be like and how we can replicate that in real life as well with the green screen <clears throat> So yeah, I'm just currently modeling this scene, and um, I thought I'd go through some of the, uh, some of the, some of it with you. And it's going quite nicely. The main thing I'm sort of focusing on at the moment, if it doesn't want to jam up, are the um, sort of details. Just certain little details. One of the harder things, though, is that when I'm working in a scene like this is making sure that I can actually see everything in the render preview but the thing is it's not it's not naturally lit it's kind of lit by lights that are, because this is an interior scene as opposed to the two backdrops I've done which are exterior I have to yeah wait sometimes till the light starts to kind of like really fill out things as you can see here it's starting to like kind of like show things a bit more which can be a bit annoying but it, it traces quite quickly the scene is not too complicated at the moment. We're about just under, just over two and a half thousand um, polys as well, so it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do is just sort of fill out certain things here. I might have to restart Blender. Sometimes it starts to jam up a bit when I've got the UV window open here, just because of the size of the actual uh, textures I'm actually using. Um, I believe this one here is about 2K, so it's not too bad. But I think it's something to do with the actual amount of textures that are being used within each scene. Uh, it tends to kind of not always work on the best side for Blender when you're doing render previews for some reason. Um, but there you go, that's just part of it. So I'll just bring that up there, just make this a bit smaller. Also, rendering an animation on this screen over here as well. And, um, might be able to do like a video on that um, at some point, adding that into the actual engine. Um, it's a really cool animation as well. Really excited to see how this one comes out. So uh, yeah, very cool times. Okay, I've just come out of the render preview. I've decided to keep it OpenGL format just so that it runs a bit smoother. I noticed a couple of things that we'll be doing is changing the UV mapping for these uh, four kind of wall plates that I've got here. Which are actually wood. Um, they're sort of very, very dulled out, desaturated wooden panels that kind of look metallic as well, which is quite cool. Um, so the main thing I'm kind of focusing on, uh, focusing on right now is this pipe. Um, I think I was adding a few kind of nails to this as well. So I'm actually going to take these out because they weren't really working for me very well. And just to keep things a bit more simple as well. Um, I probably won't add too many bolts to these pipes, I don't think. Um, one thing I do need to add is another part of the pipe here. This is going to go more into the kind of ceiling of the scene. It's going to take away some of those verts, make it a bit smaller. So when I'm doing pipes, I usually just use about five vertices because it's a lot easier for rendering and a lot easier to kind of like work in general. Um, this can kind of poly <clears throat> blocky kind of look is taken away when I add the um, the subdivision uh, modifier. But I do that after I've modeled 
uh, an object. For, in for example, I'll be finishing this pipe off first before I even add that. But then again, you know, I'll still be able to edit the model even with the modifier added, but that's just the way I kind of work usually. Get the main thing done, set in place, then add the modifier. So I think this pipe's looking quite cool. Straighten up a bit there. And uh, we're going to just move this up there. Awesome stuff. Stretch that across a bit. Nice. So again, guys, I'm just checking on this uh, animation thing. Don't have to do much. It's been going on for about two days now, I think, this particular animation. So there's a lot of frames. But it's going really nicely. That's the thing about animations. They take you know a good while, especially if you've got a maybe say 300 frames of animation um, depending on how complicated the scene is as well um, usually I, I render all my animations at a lower sample as well so usually about a, a render for Nia will consist of between mm, usually 900 to 1000 samples Sometimes I've gone to 1,500 samples just because of volumetric lighting, um, just to getting it as kind of clean and kind of sharp as possible, especially in kind of like very if it's very close to the camera. But um, animations I tend to do about between 500 to 900, 800 samples. It's mainly sort of 500 to 700, I'd say, but it can change. But I do it do them a lot less than the actual renders themselves um, the set themselves just because it's it's uh, a lot quicker that way so I'm just going to take some of these textures here and use them for my pipe I tend to just borrow the textures that I've used already because I know that okay that pipes had that texture I'm just going to add it to that one and if I have like say like a reference that I've got of another of a render that I've done for like a test render of the scene I can usually have a look at that and then see okay so what worked what didn't so for example uh, I think it might be this one not that one not that one okay let's have a look okay so I haven't actually rendered any new ones out today if we go in here, I've got this scene that I'm rendering. Um, I've actually sort of got it going on over here. So I've actually got some of the stuff that I've got in the scene already kind of rendered out in the background there. Again, it's kind of dullish. But, you know, we've got two lights on either side. We don't, don't want it to be too bright. I can even enhance the brightness within Photoshop if I need to for final renders. Um, I'm quite happy with the, the way it's kind of looking at the moment. But um, yeah, I think that would do for those pipes to be honest, I think that will be fine. I might add brickwork to the top panel here, but I'll see, I think that will look quite nice actually. Okay, um, yeah, that's a cool, that will look, look fine. This one here, I might do a slightly different colour, uh, I might actually borrow from this just because it's a slightly different texture I think it would look quite cool just to add that possibly we can't really tell until we actually see the render in, in view um, that was not the right one what's going on there? that's better ok put that one over there Lovely. for some reason I've got a blossom going on. Don't want the blossom. Okay, so that's a nice pipe sort of coming out of this larger pipe here. And I'm gonna add just a bit more to the top I think just to give it a bit more of a, a final look. Again it doesn't need too much. I'll probably change the texture as well. So these were actually added as separate models so now they don't affect these ones so instead of instancing that model there I actually create a brand new one which is why the ch texture change for those except these ones 
So sometimes I instance the model, which is kind of copying it, but keeping its object data. This means that it renders faster. Um, it's really good if you want to just duplicate loads of trees in a scene. You probably just want to create an instance of an original model and copy that. So then it just cuts down the render times. But um, if you want to change the texture of that model, though, then you want to create a brand new version of it. So you just sort of uh, duplicate it instead of Alt D. I use Shift D to do that. Okay, so that's done there. I just need to duplicate this now over to the other side. We're slowing down a bit, I've noticed. So I'm just going to take the UV out there and uh, just copy this pipe over to the other side. And we slow down again. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to copy this pipe model and its kind of bottom area as well. <clears throat> just going to copy those over. Um, I might actually, before I do that, I'm just going to add some quick bolts to the platform a bit here. It always makes a difference when you're adding little details like this, I always find. Even though they might not even be seen very clearly, because depending on the lighting, the plane might not even sort of notice them, but then it becomes kind of like a, a subconscious thing. It's like. The way we see the real world, we know there's bolts, we know there's brackets, we know there's kind of nails keeping everything everything together. And, um, well, it's kind of like that with Nia. Like, you probably won't notice them, but when you do notice them, it kind of just makes things a lot more kind of realistic and, in a sense, immersive as well. It does feel more real, and that gives off the element, even subconsciously, without even knowing it kind of gives off that feeling of like realism because detail detail is such a big thing such an important thing especially for Nia and I think for all kind of games that want to take on a kind of a realistic look I think it's so important to have that in your game and it just comes down to being observant really um, I'd say that's the main thing uh, being observant sort of looking at the world around you and then sort of learning shape and form from that and um, sort of taking that on board and then mimicking that the, to the best of your ability really well in some cases it's kind of doing it as sort of kind of quickly as possible because you don't want to spend years designing one table you know with loads of bolts you want to you know you don't want to get too too carried away with it and I think I did that when I started Nia back in well, it's about July um, 2018 when I really got into Blender. I was like, wow, you know, this is so cool. The software is amazing. But you don't want to get too carried away with it. Which is why a lot of the time I'll kind of pull from other scenes. Like I've got here a particular scene open up there that I've sort of copied something from, which I actually need to redo. That. I've got a scene here that I'm rendering out at the moment, so I've sort of cut that put down the back burner. Well, I might do, actually. I might render this out in the background. And, because I'm not actually on a render preview here, so it should work out quite fine. So, although this is more of my main working computer, I still work, I still render things on this computer too. It might be in the background while I'm working. Um, but it's always happening. You know, it's, it's very important to kind of, kind of keep that going. Especially for a game like Neo, of such a big size as well, it's such a big game. So I'll take that, take that. Yeah, I'm just gonna basically instance, I'd say. Yeah, I'm just gonna instance this. Uh, one thing I've kind of messed up on is the. do then I'll take it over here and place it where it needs to be and then delete the other one and that doesn't work 
better not do that. Let's kind of undo that, and then if I just take away the other side, so basically, basically there's these like metal kind of uh, platformy things coming out. It's just causing a few problems, so I'm just gonna uh, duplicate that. Come over here, take away the one that we don't need, which is this one. Delete the verts. Come back over here. Now I should be able to get that one and I think delete that. I think. I should delete the other one. Does that work? Yes, I believe it does. Awesome stuff. But we don't need this one. So just like the other one, it's going to delete the verts. Verts. Okay, let's put that set in place. Two pipes. I'm probably going to move this one just a bit so it's a bit more kind of symmetrical. Um, probably the best way to do that is to select this and this. Bring this over here. Make this over here. Change that over there. doing this the other scene is actually going to be uh, rendering soon as well so that's pretty cool and the scene I'm rendering in the background is going to be added into the engine tomorrow but I've already done some videos on that already um, adding sort of scenes into the engine so it's nothing that you haven't seen before really it's just same old it's just adding new scenes into the engines at the same time while it's fairly easy and just same old same old is actually still quite exciting because there's a new fairly big area that's being added to the game so I'm quite excited about that I'm actually gonna just look at this uh, top light area uh, that wants to work oh, that does not want to work uh, it's gonna change the transformation to the center of mass so now I can move this up a lot more the actual Origin is now in the center of this object here that I'm moving instead of like over here because this platform was actually copied from a much bigger model of this entire sort of cylinder here. Uh, this kind of net thing that you can see going around the interior scene here is actually um, it has a texture to it. I think it might be. Possibly like a brick texture. I don't think it's even hasn't even been UV unwrapped properly, but it's just covering the entire interior to stop sunlight from getting into it. And I've done it to some of my other interiors as well. Stops any kind of maybe there might be some slight gaps here and there, which might like let some sunlight in that you don't really want. So you just kind of I just cover the entire kind of shell it over. To stop any uh, sunlight from coming in, so that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna move this up there. Yeah, it's just looking pretty cool actually. I might play with this a bit more quickly before I. I mean, the plan is to uh, copy these pipes over to this door over here. I think I need to copy a couple of different things to this door. Maybe not, because I changed the bolts. I had these big brown kind of bolts here on the side of the door. But I decided to take them away just because I thought they were a bit too clunky looking and replace them with smaller. Um, what is that? Hexagonal. Yes, hexagonal um, bolts. <laughs> I had to work out my sizes there. I always get a bit confused sometimes. Is that a pen pentagonal? Is that five? Octagonal is eight. Hexagonal is six. I uh, can't actually remember some of the other ones. There's some weird names. Maybe you'd like to comment if I'm wrong there. Maybe you want to correct me. Maybe mention some of the other cool, cool names for different sized objects, shapes. I'm gonna copy that now. I'm gonna bring that down, and I'm gonna mirror. 
so it's kind of, it's kind of weird kind of overlapping kind of look to it, which is quite cool. Let me bring that up. Higher. Yeah, that's fine like that. I think it'll be good. Maybe I'll like this a bit more. Nice. Add something else to it. Something different, I suppose. Not too sure if I'm happy with it, though. We might we well, we might be working just a bit slower um, than usual in OpenGL because what's happening now is that we've started a render here of the scene, so it's rendering at about 900 samples, 100% resolution. It's very cool. I'll show you guys what that looks like in a bit. You can even see here how long it might take. So we've got about 13 minutes, 55 seconds. Left on that render. Alrighty. Hmm. So what I might do is just create a new object actually for this bit, this particular sort of area. Because again, I need to. One thing I do need to kind of flesh out is the ceiling. We've got a lot of stretched uh, textures going on. As you can see here, we're sort of modelling this part of the... There goes the mic. Making sure that you guys can actually hear me. Just going to quickly do a little volume test there. Hello, hello! Yeah, I think we're on a good volume still. Awesome. So yeah, we've, we've got a bit of a stretch texture thing going on in the ceiling. I like the tones. I really do like the tones going on. Um, but yeah, the scening just needs a bit more work. Needs extra things added to it. I'm not saying I'm going to get into the ceiling for this video. I think what I'll be focus on, focusing on more is actually the floor area in a bit. Um, and sort of working my way around. Also a bit more of the wall as well and just fine tuning that. The centerpiece here will be one of the last things I, I think I'll finish, um, I'll finish on um, after I've done the ceiling. So that's cool. I don't think it's going to take too much longer. So I'm actually going to Australia uh, next week. I'm leaving on the Wednesday. Cut this bit out. Don't mention anything about when I'm leaving. Add this bit back in. So yeah, I won't be doing a video, I don't think, next week. Um, depending, I'm going to be away, and um, so I might not have a video out for another two weeks. I know it's crazy. So I will be doing some sort of sketch work for the game. So there might be some kind of behind-the-scenes video that I'll do that's in a slightly different format potentially. But um, I will be hopefully updating the Steam page with some dev news content. So definitely stay on in tune for that. And um, yeah. Okay, let's take that out. Move that down. Oh, Maddie. That's looking pretty cool. Oh, I'm going to... Uh, I don't know what the hell that noise was that I made. Oh, no, I'm going to... Uh, it's going to move this up here. I'm thinking of using this kind of extension, kind of bracket decorative thing that I've done that kind of comes out of the wall onto the floor, kind of looks really nice. I'm going to add it to the ceiling part here. I think it's going to look quite nice. So this again, just using the assets I've already made, I'm kind of getting creative with them. I might even go as far as to actually adding a second light I need to edit this light actually it's a bit clunky it's just a kind of generic kind of light that I had set up for the scene that kind of been copy and pasted all over the place you can see them in the scene currently these ones here I believe depending on when this was rendered these ones have been edited slightly they've now got kind of like a grate going across them so they all need to be replaced but it was just a, 
a case of just making sure I had the lights in the particular places that I wanted to have them. Um, it's again a kind of a, almost like a phase of kind of blocking a scene. It's the same with lights, especially for interior. You need to kind of one of the the, f um, the first things I try and set up is the lighting because uh, it's really important even before kind of creating all the textures and all the details. I want really good lighting before I, off my scene before I start doing that. Um, most likely the case is that it actually does change along the way, but at least I've got some good lighting and also the Photoshop effects as well. Um, so that's a really important part, um, especially for kind of like early renders. Um, for this particular scene, I've only got one effect right now, which is kind of crazy considering all the other kind of scenes have, except some of the animation crop effects, um, have a hell of a lot of different kind of things going on. Uh, one thing I do need to add though, and I have it added to this particular one. And I might need to add it there too. Is the um, so I was just thinking there is the noise reduction. Every effect needs noise reduction. So I'm just going to set that up quickly while I'm on Photoshop. Sometimes I wear all these different hats in one go. I never, most of the time, I may be in one software like modeling, I'm just in the zone. But then something comes up in Visionaire, and I'm like, oh, okay, I better sort of fix that up. And, uh, so it depends really how, what way I kind of sway when I'm working in the game. I'm doing the game, um, the game development stuff. Here we go. Reduce. On strength, it's already set up nicely. Just gives everything a bit more of a kind of smoother look. And I don't like adding too much noise reduction at all. Uh, otherwise, it gets rid of all the details. You get this really weird effect I've seen in like newer versions of Blender where they add this noise reduction and it just makes everything look plasticky like it gets rid of all the kind of detail and it's too clean I think anyway um, I actually need to copy that into this action list here which I thought um, you know I've kind of finished the scene that these action lists here were created for and I thought, yeah, it's like a great render, but no, I haven't added the noise reduction. So I better double check some of these action lists that I've created recently and just make sure I've got noise reduction. It's not really a major thing, but when you have the render up on full screen in the game, it really makes a difference because those details are enlarged, you know? Yeah, that's even cool. The render's coming out nicely there. It's just using a a different sky map as well for this particular scene which is quite exciting. Alrighty, go back into here. I'm going to make this light a bit smaller so it kind of comes down. I'm going to bring that up a bit because it's come off the panel a bit more. And, uh, I might duplicate a light source. These kind of orb meshes are actually invisible lights they're basically spheres with an emission shader added to them. So if I go into the actual shader options, the node settings, you can see here I've got an emission with a strength of about 0 0.900. And um, yeah, it's actually doing its thing right now. With the object settings, uh, you can see here I've taken away shadows, taken away camera, so it's invisible, so it doesn't cast any shadows, and it's just diffuse transmission and volume scattering. And it basically just creates a nice light for the scene. So some of the light sources here, even though there's lights, they've actually, there's actually invisible objects creating more light for the scene, which just gives it a more effective look. And this is used mainly just for interior scenes. Um, I don't really need to do that for exterior, which is they're, they're much easier to work with when you're lighting stuff. Uh, so I actually really want to, once this render is finished, uh, I'll show you an example of what this will look like with the effects added to it as well, if you want. Uh, the main goal I want to do is try to finish rendering this scene tonight, by tonight, and then tomorrow I'm going to do a whole batch uh, Photoshop effect 
run on all the images so they have um, the effects that you'll be seeing soon added to this image on all of them and then I add them into Vision Air and also I have to convert them into WebP files as well using trusted little um, tool called X and Convert 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 X and Convert which is great it's just um, I've been using it for ages it just basically converts all my PNGs to web P files. I can actually set the compression as well. Um, whether I want it lossless, which is just kind of doesn't make the, the images that much smaller. So I kind of keep to about 100% for the main renders for Nia, which still reduces the actual size of the, the file from PNG to WebP really nicely. Um, but for animations, I reduce it to about 90, which is a lot smaller. Probably water animations will be even like even less maybe about 80 but you know you start going too low you start to see the quality becoming kind of naff so I'll see how I go with that but it's just keeping file sizes as small as possible um, so yeah and some animations I might even go less than 90 but it depends I don't think I've done that so far I think most of my animations I've added and like rendered out and added into the engine have sort of stayed about 90 so um, that's that. Yeah, just making sure that I'm recording. That's all good. <laughs> the annoying thing when you realise you're not recording is like, oh, okay, great. Uh, so yeah, that's rendering out nicely. We've got another um, just less than well, just over let's say one minute thirty seconds. Um, What's that's going on there? I'm going to copy and paste this wedge, this metal wedge. It's about, it's like a metal kind of decorative kind of thing going on. Let's move that over there. I'm probably going to start looking at adding my nails and bolts to this. So one of the time-consuming things I guess about Nia, Nia's modeling, is adding the details. Sometimes I don't so much depending on what the scene is but it's still a thing that I mean I recently did a, a dev news update on the Steam page about creating terrain for Nia and these particular terrain areas that I focus on within this dev news um, <clears throat> they're quite far away from the actual camera angle where you'll see them but still it's um, adding the flora and those extra rock elements and even <clears throat> something I didn't actually mention within the dev news is um, is actually the UV unwrapping of that those cliffs because you want the textures to be as kind of detailed as possible so you need to kind of re UV unwrap the model which is basically taking the model um, creating a net from that model adding it onto a a texture for example I'll quickly go back to here I might be able to show you on here and then you can see here is that it's actually <clears throat> taking the net of the 3d model cutting it up and then throwing it onto the texture so I can then kind of change the way the texture looks upon the actual 3d model so this is the you know, I'm assuming this is could this could be the back the top part of the model this is the bottom part so the bit that we could see so that's the bit that I would kind of focus on the most. I mean, for example, here though, to make the best use of the actual surface, you know, I usually just, you know, uh, oh, we're going through our human character just then through the camera. Look, we're going inside and whoa, I go through the head. Um, we're actually, you know, only using this part of the model, right? So to make the best use, I can actually stretch that now all across the, the image, as much of the image as possible. When you start going across the image like that, you'll start seeing kind of weird kind of lines of where the texture's starting again on the model. Depending on what kind of texture it is, you could be a bit messy. If it's kind of seamless, you can get away with it. So yeah, that's cool. I think our scene has finished rendering. So I'm now going to save this. I'm actually going to throw it into Photoshop and uh, show you the effect of looking up. Ah, uh, that's me typing of looking up at the scene um, of how the image will actually look with uh, so let's have a look, let's see where we are we need to go to final windows okay cool, that scene was this one I believe All right. view 
Nerve Station. It's not that one. I've just got to find the action list. Believe it's that one. Fantastic. So there you can see there's a bit more light now, even in the shady area, there's a bit more tone, the sky has come out a bit more. Just adds a bit more kind of a striking look to it, which is really nice actually. It looks really cool. Uh, very nice indeed. That's just an example anyway, so I won't save that for now, but it just shows you what the uh, the scene's going to look like. And that kind of stuff can be done very quickly. The, the longer part is the render time, that's for sure. It takes a lot longer to render. And since that's over and done with, I am now going to save that quickly, pop to the loo, and set up a render preview. I'll be back in a minute. And here we are, guys. We have our render preview of our scene. So it's quite nice seeing the pipes in place now. If I start moving this, we are going to see some changes within the environment. Um, what I usually have open here now as well are they're the objects that I need to add to the scene. Um, I usually have my copy and pasted objects that I've taken from another scene that I might use in the scene in this view here. And then I have like an open GL version of the render view here, which to be honest, have a bit bigger usually so yeah but for this instance here before I start actually texturing this part of the light that we've added I'm just going to bring in these models into the scene that's just a case of kind of moving things around a bit lovely very large and for the scene I had them in they haven't been scaled or changed so it might work quite nicely if I had them here maybe having a light source inside them or at least some of them this is kind of I was talking about this one by the way having a light source there <laughs> kind of talking to myself again when I model usually I'm listening to something and I'm in my own world so it's a bit strange kind of talking through things um, but I'm going to try and add this to somewhere else in the scene. I'm probably making that a bit smaller as well. Maybe moving it down a bit, potentially. We'll see. That's quite cool. Having it like that. Bringing that over. Let's see what we've got. Let's move that now. So I just clicking the little dot delete button on the keyboard enables me to get to the model that I have selected. Kind of pins more pins uh, pinpoints me there straight away. So I can be anywhere in the scene, press that button, and I'm straight there. That's actually looking quite nice. For what I can tell within the render preview, um, those kind of nail claw kind of ornamental things actually look quite nice where they're placed. Uh, just gonna look at the other one see what that looks like. I'm interested to see what the... because I have added that extra light there. I'm just going to bring that over and maybe adjust a lighting. Yeah, it's going to be way too bright at the moment, as you can see. So I'm just going to take that, make it its own, because it's its own object, and maybe go to about just over halfway, and go to about 400 there. Maybe a bit less. I'm going to go a bit less on that. Because I want to see if a light source looks quite nice. Maybe on some of them. I might just add a bit more depth to the ceiling. Which is quite cool. I might even change the coloration as well. If I'm not too sure. See how we go. Okay, that's pretty cool. 
I'll keep that there for now. I'm going to go back to our lamp model over here and create a nice texture for the the actual sheet that it sits on that it's connected to. Not too sure what texture I'm going to use for this yet. Um, to be honest, I might actually go for the same texture that the actual light bulb of the uh, the actual holder of the light is using. Uh, see what that looks like. I think that'll work quite nicely actually. Might have some problems with the UV being open, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is select the model that we have here. And copy that over here. I might just create its own model of it instead of creating an instance person. And now I'm going to replace the light that I have. have set up at the moment. Okay, cool. Ooh. I know sometimes if it doesn't load properly, and you, you think you've got it in place, if, it, if you don't wait for just a little while, it goes back to where it was, which is kind of annoying. I think it's mostly to do with the, um, the render preview going on at the same time. So you can see on this window here, we've got the uh, the kind of mesh set lighting going on, which is quite nice. We're going to keep the bulb though, and just take everything else away, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, not too sure what I'm going to call this video. Um, this is kind of like a working with the lights, I suppose. But it's been a bit of Photoshop mixed in there as well, and seeing a render coming into Photoshop, so I think it's going to be quite a cool video. Uh, what's that look like? Yeah, I'm going off a bit here. Let's take that off. Oh, that's the one I wanted. Perfect. It's going to take the shot off first because the pink one that you can see here is the, the mesh, I think. I think it is. Taking a bit longer to delete as well. Yeah, yeah, I think we're all good. Because if I'm deleting things with the render preview on, it's just going to take a little bit longer for the the actual scene to kind of catch up with all the lighting and everything that's going on, and the shadows and the, you know, and everything. It's uh, even running a really good, you know, computer like I've got. I'm running a Ryzen 3900X. Uh, 12 core system with 64 gigabytes of RAM. I always get muddled up with those um, numbers at the beginning of the Ryzen's. 39X 6.6. .6. Yeah. But no, it's, um, it's all good. Okay, so I'm just going to take that. Oh, not that one. I'm just going to take. Where is it? Show itself now. In there. There you go. It's great in Blender. You can just go inside models and select what you need. Let's bring that down a bit more. Bring that across a bit more. There you go. We should have a bit more light coming out of it now, which is nice. Perfect. Very cool. And I'll probably do the same to that one too. I'll do that in a bit. Um, we've got a bit of problems going on here. There you go. Let's bring that down a bit more. Nice, and now I'm going to add some extra smoothing that as well. So as well as adding the um, the modifier, the subdivider modifier to smooth things out, I actually create a smooth effect instead of flat. It's smooth, so that actually has a really big effect on the um, the finished scene when it's rendered. If I don't add a um, like a subdivider modifier, then at least I'll add a smooth finish to the model. So that's something I definitely do. Uh, it just adds a much nicer look to everything. Okay, move that over there. Move that over here. And 
add that there. So I'm just guessing to a point of what kind of texture I'm going to use for this little bit here that I've added. Um, it's not looking too bad actually. I'm going to dry it up a bit. dark metal. Uh, it's because of the lighting as well I suppose. But one thing I do need to do is I want to change the lighting of this ball. And the great thing about these kind of lights, these object lights, is that they react to the size. So you don't have to increase the brightness. You can increase the size of the object and you know it's going to start making things brighter. So it's, I do like working with invisible light objects and they could be any shape you could you know you could create this pipe here duplicate it and add the same texture make it invisible and that would be like the pipe would be a light in itself you can move it around and you know create a pipe light for some reason you know so you can create different shaped lights I like that I like working like that in blender for certain scenes uh, I'm gonna go to about 300 I think. And I'm just going to change the um, the lightness of it. I'm going to change the colour maybe. No, I think that'll be good enough actually. That's pretty cool. Awesome. going to add some bolts to this part because even though you're not going to really look up at the light if you're at a particular scene I'll just get rid of the UV if you're like standing here walking towards the door you can see the light here you know, you'll be able to see those details because well there's a fair amount of light now coming onto the scene um, so it's actually looking really nice, um, but that detail, these details, you know, they come back into it. Actually, I might even go as far as to add something a bit extra. I'm just going to create its own, mm, its own model data. So I've copied it, which means when I change this texture, it's not going to copy. I'm um, change the texture of the ones that I've just copied. These kind of horn kind of ornamental things coming off here. I want to experiment with these because I think they're going to look really nice high up as well. Um, brilliant. Copy and paste it. So now I'm actually creating an instance because I will be changing the texture and maybe the shape potentially of this particular kind of horn model I call it like a horn because it looks like a horn or like a claw intentionally and um, yeah I probably want it to be the same texture as this that it's connected to so I'll take that Move that over there. Now change the texture. That will be that one. So I don't think we can really see it very well at the moment with the lighting that we have. That's cool. That's all good. Awesome. Well, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to do a slight little alterations on this scene, and then I'm going to render a preview of it, an actual rendered image, and I'll show it to you guys and put it through Photoshop. See you soon! Okay guys, I'm back! And uh, here we have our render of the scene that I was just working on. So I still haven't textured that pipe there, and I've added some more details to the light area. Still need to create the vent there as well. But um, one thing I'll also be looking at is the textures on this pipe. Uh, they seem a bit off at the moment, so I'll be looking at that. Probably just the UV being a bit dodgy. But yeah, I'm now going to add my effects to this scene. 
on our FX here. And there you go. Just mainly is contrast at the moment. Um, there might be some other effects added to bring up more light, but that's looking really cool. Um, very awesome. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, again, I might not be available for the next two weeks to do another devlog. If I do, it will be a different kind of devlog. Probably showing more maybe sketch work, that kind of thing. So it might be a slightly different video that I'll be uploading. And um, But yeah, thanks for watching. Definitely wish this near on Steam. Like, subscribe, comment on this video if you'd like to see more devlog footage. Um, there's plenty more coming your way. It'll be from Blender, Photoshop, Vision Air Studio 5, eventually Sound. And again, like maybe in the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing more kind of sketch work or uh, sort of behind the scenes kind of videos as well. So it's going to be a nice mix of different things. So stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next devlog. Bye.